Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome. Uh, I am here with Tani Leslie today. Tani, we are starting our uh, Message of Hope series this week called This Changes Everything. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. And yourself? Doing great, doing great. I am uh, excited for this uh, Message of Hope series because we're going to be talking about the cross and uh, you know we live in times of of uh, of chaotic world. Definitely some hardships going on right now. Um, a lot of things are happening, and I think we need some hope. What do you think about that? Very good, indeed. Um. So we are going to be launching, uh, if there is anybody, I see that are, is there some people that, who are connecting uh, here today. I would like to say hello to each and every single one of you. We would like to say hello. I know we are um, on Facebook and also on YouTube uh, on the Hill Country Seventh-day Adventist Church uh, uh, Facebook page and also on the YouTube page. And uh, if you have a prayer request, we will not only be um, uh, preaching or opening the Bible and doing a Bible study in a sermon series this week, but we'll also be praying for you. So if you have a prayer request, we would absolutely love to know um, and we can, we, can do, we can put you in our prayer list. Tani, uh, how important do you think a prayer is and how, how often should we be praying in this in these especially times especially in time like now we need to be constant in prayer the scripture tells us to pray without ceasing and god is never busy so we must make use of every time and every moment he's there to hear us the scripture tells us that before we call he's hearing us and he mm. admonishes us to come boldly before the throne of grace amen amen i am a believer of that so I know some of you are connecting. Uh, if you have a special prayer request, please let us know. Put it in the comments. Um, as I have mentioned before, we have mentioned, uh, we'll be live each and every single one of these nights at 7.15 Texas time, Central time. And we'll be uh, touching on a, on a subject uh, titled, This Changes Everything. And messages of hope in these chaotic times. So you can be a missionary. How can someone and be just, a missionary right now, Tani? Right now, just share this video and like this video. Invite a friend to watch. Absolutely. That's the simple. How many friends? I think we, we have so many people in our social medias, right? That we can just share the link and hundreds and perhaps thousands of people can watch the uh, the live stream, right? We can, And you can do a host party. You could just go on your Facebook page and do a host party and your friends will see that you're sharing something and they can watch. Absolutely. Welcome everybody. Welcome to uh, our Messages of Hope series. This changes everything. Uh, and we will just go ahead and get started. Tani, would you pray with us? Sure. Father in heaven, we thank you for day that you have given us and as we come tonight lord to hear another message i pray father that you will give us receptive heart we lay our situations before you because we know that you are an untime god lord we know that whatever our circumstances whatever our situation that you give hope in the time of hopelessness so lord we place every home everyone that is watching every family member everyone tonight lord that needs to hear from you we pray lord and we lift them up before you god we pray for those who are hungry those that are needy those that lost jobs those those, those who are worried about mm -hmm. what tomorrow holds lord father we thank you that you have walked ahead of time and you know what tomorrow holds so i pray that your peace which passeth all understanding will be mm -hmm. ours tonight and for the rest of our life Hear our prayers, we pray. Remember the pastor. And as he gives us this message, may the Holy Spirit come and be with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 
Welcome to the Lewis family, Albert, Cheryl, uh, Robin, Michelle, Limari, Cassandra. Welcome everybody, D. We'll be jumping into the message right now. Share this link, everybody. Uh, Teresa as well, Teresa. Uh, Teresa Tanny asks Welcome. for prayer Welcome request. Everyone. Absolutely. Chanel Simpson, prayer request for my son and daughters. Prayer request for the children returning to school this week as well. Let's keep him in prayer. Amen. We will. We will. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tani. Thank you, everyone, for joining us here tonight in this series, Messages of Hope. I am hopeful, and I know for sure that the word of the Lord never comes back void. So tonight, you will receive a blessing. And each and every single day of this week, I am hopeful and I am sure that God will also will also bless you and your home and your family. I'd like to uh, open the Bible today. In the book of John chapter 1, verse 1. And scripture says the following. In the beginning, there was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. The same Word was the one who spoke things into existence. Mm. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Let there be light. Let there be a firmament. Let there be dry land. Let there be the stars, the sun, and the moon. Let there be animals in the sea. Let there be animals on the land. Let us make man in our image according to our likeness, the Bible says. Now, there are two instances where I believe God pours out his love for for humanity one in creation week and two at the cross god speaks everything into existence but god gets his hands dirty with mud to making his masterpiece in the creation week not only he takes his time into making mankind differently but now create one additional day seventh day of the week to spend time with his children but then the false occurs right the fall occurs evil enters his this world disobedience happens death happens lies tears and fear and sickness and killing and envy follow and things gets things get really bad so quickly that god wipes out humanity and even the animals with the flood Genesis chapter 6, verse 6 says, So the Lord was sorry he had ever made them and put them on the earth. And then he says this, It broke his heart. Notice how God's heart was full and joyful at creation, and also at the cross when Satan was defeated. But in the same way, God's heart was broken also right after creation. Creation week and at the cross as well. But the plan of salvation is activated and the word became flesh and the plan of salvation became activated. The Lord came to save that which was lost, to rescue his children from an everlasting death, to give life, but not any kind of life, but abundant life. So then Jesus' ministry starts, right? But it starts and it starts with a word that I want to share with you guys today. And that is the word follow. And it starts with the word, follow me. Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 through 19 says the following, follow me. And walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea. For they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Mm. And just as that, Jesus continues to to call his disciples with a follow me. Not only disciples, but crowds start to follow him everywhere. And in Mark chapter 15, verse 41, the Bible says that when he was in Galilee, they used to follow him and minister to him. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. And as Jesus continues to minister, the miracles start happening. The blind see, the dead live, the lame walk, the mute speak, 
and the sinner is saved. And they are empowered. Not only he's doing this ministry, but the people are empowered. Look at Luke chapter 9, verse 1 and verse 2. The Bible says, When Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. They enjoyed, they were blessed, active agents of the heavens, proclaiming the good news and doing miracles in the name of Jesus. Peter and the disciples were in a spiritual high. Peter was glad that he chose to follow Jesus. But remember when was the last time you felt like that? When you were high on Jesus? When something beautiful and amazing happened in your life? When perhaps he did a great miracle in your life? Amen, right? Wait a second. We all know that in life we experience highs and lows, right? Not only in our everyday life, but also in our spiritual life, right? Well, this happened to Peter too. John chapter 13, verse 36 to 38 says the following. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus answered, where I go, you cannot follow me, but you will follow later. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you right now? I will lay my life down for you. Jesus answered, will you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly, I say to you, a rooster shall not crow until you deny me three times. No, Peter said, even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the other disciples vowed the same. Wow. This is a low point for Peter. How can Jesus tell me I cannot follow him where he is going? Remember that the disciples had in mind that he was going to be the next king of Jerusalem. And they were going to defeat the Romans. Therefore, Peter is having a really hard time understanding what Jesus is saying now. Not only Peter experiences a low point, but also Jesus does. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 36 to 38, if I am not mistaken, the Bible says the following. Then Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane. And he said, sit here while I go over there to pray. He took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, And he became anguished and distressed. And he told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Mm. You don't see Jesus very often asking for companionship, right? In fact, Jesus often retracts from the crowd to be alone. But here Jesus asks those who have been close to him, close to his heart, those who calls him Master and Lord to accompany him and pray with him. And here he is. And here is a fact. We need each other, right? We need each other. But there are times when people are not there for us. And when we don't come through for one another, God will send an angel from heaven to strengthen you. The book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 41, says the following. He walked away about stone's throw, and he knelt down to pray. Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, and not mine. And an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. Mm. I love that. Jesus' agony didn't consist on the physical pain that he was about to encounter, but rather the separation from him and his father that he was going to suffer. Now, fast forward. The follow changes. Okay? The follow changes. And in Luke chapter 22, uh, the Bible continues to say that even as Jesus said, 
uh, this a crowd approach, right? That a crowd approached them that was led by Judas, by Judas, one of the 12 disciples. And Judas walked over to Jesus to greet him with a kiss. And Jesus says to Judas, would you betray the son of man with a kiss? So they arrested him and led him to the high priest's home. And the Bible says the following. He says, Peter followed at a distance. Peter followed at a distance. Let me ask you this. What drove Peter to follow at a distance? Fear? Confusion? That he was also going to be beaten? This is where the Via Dolorosa starts. Meaning of the Via Dolorosa, the sorrowful path, the painful path. And you know, now that we are going through this pandemic, there are many Peters amongst us, right? We have accepted Christ, but we followed him at a distance. We love Jesus, but we don't love his bride, the church, so much. Perhaps we have one foot in and one foot out, involved but not committed, around but not in. And if we are in, we're also out. Jesus poured himself in those 12 men in three and a half years. Jesus spent time with them. Jesus taught them and experienced many things together. But when he needed them, they weren't there for him. Not only that, But one of them, Judas, went the complete opposite side. And Jesus still loves them. That's why Peter weeps when he hears the rooster crow. I can imagine Peter thought, Man, Jesus truly knew that I was going to deny him. That I was going to follow him at a distance. That I didn't want to be associated with him after he was taken. And even so, he still loved me. And accepted me. Did you know that there is nothing that you can do in this world that will lead the Lord to love you any less? That's the power of the gospel. No matter how far you are following him today, so great is the love of God that you get to a point that you don't want to follow him at a distance anymore. You get closer to him. I want to remind you today that Jesus loves you. And if you're following him at a distance, if you perhaps, right, at one point you 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 experienced your first love with your your first love with him. You were in a spiritual high, perhaps right now you're in a spiritual low, just like Peter was. Just like Jesus had his spirit, not his spiritual low, but his low moment in the, in, in, the, in the Garden of Gethsemane. That God, the Father, had to send a, an angel to come for him. If you are going through a, a spiritual low, if you are following him like Peter was, I want to invite you, I want to invite you to come and sit at the foot of the cross. You know, Peter... Even though he hit his low, he came back up and became one of the writers of some of the books and letters in the Bible. Jesus turned his life around. He calls you to be an agent of the heavens tonight and to taste his goodness and his grace. He wants to free you from sin, from slavery, and wants to give you true joy. Sit at the foot of the cross tonight, at the foot of the cross where grace and suffering meet, where he shows us his love through the judgment he received. He has won our hearts, and I'm pretty sure yours as well. Yes, let's tell him tonight, you have won my heart. And we can trade our ashes in for beauty and wear forgiveness like a crown. God poured his love in creation week and also at the cross. When you compare these two great events, you're able to see you're able to see how much God loves you and how much 
God is willing and how far God is willing to go for you. Tonight, perhaps you have followed him close in the past. Perhaps you're following him at a distance tonight. But allow the Lord to change that in you right now, this moment. Because surely at the cross, he changed everything. Would you like to ask God tonight for a change? Would you like to say a word of prayer with me? Would you like to repeat my prayer after you? Uh, uh, would you like to repeat this prayer after me? Pray with me. Father, I trade ashes for beauty tonight. And I choose to wear forgiveness as a crown. Father, I pray, Lord, that you may come into my heart and change everything in me. I don't want to follow you at a distance anymore, Lord. I want to follow you closely. Father, I accept the forgiveness of my sins. And I accept you, Lord. Right moment, right this moment, Father. Thank you for your sacrifice, Jesus. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Believe it. Live it. Share it. I'll see you tomorrow. We have just listened to another powerful message. How close are you following? So my question for us tonight, friends, a distance like Peter before his conversion, or are we following closely as he did after his conversion? But whatever your answer is, I want to remind us tonight that we need to follow Jesus. There is a saying that says, those who follow Jesus never get lost. So my encouragement to us is continue to follow Jesus. And as we follow him, may we be closer and closer drawn to him until you can see yourself in his image. Join us tomorrow night at 7.15 p.m. for another wonderful, inspiring message in this series called This Changes Everything, a message of hope. I want to thank all of you tonight that have joined us. And tomorrow, invite a friend and let us continue to worship together.